Sairam students. In this session of English literature, we are going to learn a poem, Wind, written by Subramanya Bharti. Subramanya Bharti is a Tamil poet. However, this poem has been translated from Tamil by A.K. Ramanujan. A.K. Ramanujan is a Kannada and English poet. He is very well known for his translation of classical and English poetry. Let me tell you something about Subramanya Bharati. Subramanya Bharati, also known as father of modern Tamil literature. He was born on 11 December 1882 at Itayapuram, whereas he died on 12th September 1921 Chennai. His full name was Chinnaswami Subramanya Bharati. Now, let me tell you about his work. Chinnaswami Subramanya Bharati, also known as Bharatiyar, was a Tamil writer, poet, journalist, Indian independence activist, a social reformer, and a polyglot. A polyglot is a person who knows various languages. He was popularly known as Mahakavi Bharati. He was a pioneer of modern Tamil poetry and is considered one of the greatest Tamil literary figures of all time. So, he is a great poet and now we are going to learn one of his writings. Now, let me tell you the central idea of this poem before we go ahead with the poem. The poem, Wind. See, we all know that wind is a very powerful natural phenomenon. The poet in this poem depicts the enormous, utterly enormous power of wind. Okay, the power of wind in the world. We all know that wind has the potential of being both a destroyer and a creator. The weak and fragile. Fragile means those who are, you know, fragile something that is delicate, something that can be destroyed easily. Okay, this, uh, fragile that cannot withstand its fury, its anger, while the strong can use it to their advantage. The same is true of the adversities of life. You know, the problems, the unpleasant situations of life are known as is known as adversity. Those who are weak easily break down and those who are strong take them in their stride. Stride, you take a one long step and you have covered it and come out stronger. Therefore, our attitude to life and its trials and tribulations, you know, all the troubles and all the events that come in our life, that determines our response to them. Okay, so this wind, this poem here, the poet gives a strong message to us that the, those who are weak, who cannot withstand the problematic situations, they will crumble down. Whereas the one who are stronger will take it as an opportunity and emerge a more stronger personality. Okay, so let me tell you something about the title of this poem. The word wind without the definite article the refers only to the natural phenomenon called wind that can be good and evil, constructive and destructive depending on the circumstances and the attitude of people. There are at least four different facets of wind as presented in this poem. Okay, so there is step by step explanation how wind is depict, depicted as a naughty child in the initial lines and then a raging destructive youth, a very, a very helpful friend and then a powerful God which can be, who can be both creator and destroyer. So the one word title presents the entire persona of the natural force called wind who has enjoyed the status of God in many cultures, 
including the Tamil culture and mythology. Thus, the title is very appropriate. So, students, with on this note, let us start with our poem, Wind, written by Subramanya Bharati. I'll read out the poem for you and then I'll explain it. Explain with the first four lines. The wind blows strongly and causes a lot of destruction. How can we make friends with it? Wind, come softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. There, look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. He won't do what you tell him. So, come, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Practice to firm the body. Make the heart steadfast. Do this and the wind will be friends with us. The wind blows out weak fires. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. His friendship is good. We praise him every day. Translated by, written by Subramanya Bharati. Translated from the Tamil by A.K. Ramanujan. Now, as I already gave you introduction about our writer Subramanya Bharti, uh, he is a great Tamil poet, famous for his patriotism also in the pre-independence era. And uh, as it's translated by A.K. Ramanujan, who is a famous Kannada and English poet, well known for his translation of classical and modern poetry. Now, this poem went... As I always say in uh, our English literature lecture that you can uh, download the NCRT text from the internet. Okay, and uh, you can go through this poem. And I hope you are having a paper and a pen so that you write down the meaning of the meaning of new words and the difficult words that we come across in this poem. So let us start students. Let me give you the explanation. Wind, come softly. Don't break the shutters of the window. Shutters of the window, the outside frame of the window, you know, which acts as a protecting agent and that acts, um, protects us from the light and uh, wind and other forces that try to enter our house. So the shutters are like the outside, it's the outside frame that acts as a protecting agent. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. So the poet is talking to the wind. He asks the wind to come softly. Now, so he is saying that the wind should not come in a powerful way. How it should come? It should come in a soft and subtle way. Not in a strong and loud manner. Then he says that the wind is very powerful. How does it show its power? By breaking the shutters of the window. And also the wind scatters the papers all around. Wind also shows its power by throwing down the books that have been kept neatly. Or that had been arranged on the shelf. So when the wind is very powerful, it brings down the books from the shelf down. So here the poet is describing the power of the wind. Then he says that the wind, it acts in a destruction in a destruction way. Whenever there is a strong wind, all the things that are weak, like small plants, even uh, you know, small children, everyone gets scared and they can even fall and get hurt. Okay, so we can say that in the initial part of the poem, the poet is referring to the uh, referring to the wind. As a young child, you know, he's saying that it should come softly. 
just like a small child does. It shouldn't be loud. It shouldn't show a strong nature. Uh, because if it acts like a, uh, if it becomes powerful, it shows its power, it becomes destructive, just like a youth. So just like a young boy or girl who is full of energy, violence and destruction, the wind depicts its nature. Let us move ahead. There, look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. So here, what the poet says? The poet says that, look what you have done. Now whom is he talking to? He is talking to the wind. He is asking the wind to look at the destructions that it has caused. Okay, it has brought down all the things. It had torn the pages of the books and the rain. A strong, no, a, a strong and a powerful rain also follows along with the wind. So you have brought rain again, and uh, you're very clever. The wind is, ah, uh, in the wind is referred to be a clever thing. It's very good at poking fun at weaklings, poking fun, making fun of youths, making fun of weak things. Not the youth. So here, the poet. Overall, if you see, the poet tells us that the wind is a very powerful element of nature. It is very destructive and by using its destructive power, it can bring down all the weak things. Right, so the poet is also giving an important message here that all the weak things on earth can be easily broken down can be easily destroyed by the powerful nature of wind. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters. Frail means weak. Crumbling, uh, you know, that caused something to break. That falling, you know, that easily, that can be easily brought down into pieces rafters crumbling rafters rafters you know those beams that acts like a support uh, uh like a support to the roof of a building okay they are known as rafters they are the beams that act as a support to the roof of the building crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts the wind god winnows and crushes them all so here the poet he is using this word crumbling repeatedly. Why do you think so? He is using this word repeatedly to lay stress that everything crumbles. Crumbles everything comes, you know, everything breaks into pieces in the face of this strong wind. So the writer is saying that when wind is very powerful, when it is very strong, it leads to breakage of everything. Houses which are weak, doors which are weak, the rafters, even the rafters, you know, these beams which are supporting these strong buildings, even they come down. And not only these rafters, it breaks the wood, all the wooden structures, bodies of animals, of human lives, hearts, everything crumbles in the face of wind. So everything that is weak reacts by falling down and this um, you know this breaking is in the face of adversity in such unpleasant situation these weak things fall apart so the poet is saying that whenever a weak person faces any kind of adversity any kind of unpleasant situation he easily gives up okay he easily breaks down and falls i hope students you understood the first four lines and now the last line, the wind god winnows and crushes them all. Let me tell you what does the uh, process of winnowing means. Okay, look at this picture. Okay, the ladies over here are separating the shaft from the grain. Okay, separate grain from husk by, by blowing it. That is known as winnow. So here, to break the grain from the shaft. Now the wind god winnows and crushes them 
all the poet is addressing the wind as god wind god okay he is almost placing the wind on a pedestal and he is addressing it as a powerful god that means that the wind can easily make the weak people fall down and get crushed so here a comparison is done okay a comparison is made between whom between wheat and people so just like we you know just like we winnow the wheat and take the chaff the husk okay we uh, take the chaff away from the grain similarly the wind god separates the strong people from the weak people so when there is a strong wind all the weak things will get crushed and fall apart i hope students you are understanding um uh, i'm uh, going really slow so that you understand each and every line properly moving ahead the next lines here the next stanza says he won't do what you tell him so come let's build strong homes let's join the firms doors firmly practice to firm the body make the heart steadfast do this and the wind will be friends with us now here very interesting lines the poet wants us to be friend you know to make friends with the wind first of all the adversities of life that we have to face you know with all that uh, strong mind physically strong and mentally tough mind we have to face the uh, powerful nature of wind in this line what the poet tells us is we need to the adversities that come in our life we have to face them in a strong way he says that the problems will not listen to us the wind here is considered to be one of the adversities that come in our life he won't do what you tell him so what it means that the problems will not listen to us they will come any time they will come what we have to do we should be prepared to face them in preparation what we have to do we should build strong homes we should join the doors firmly when we are joining the firms uh, for, uh, doors firmly we uh, we won't allow the wind to get into our house we won't allow the problems to enter our house enter our premises and then he says that we should make our body stronger we need to become physically strong mentally tough so that we are able to face this challenges of life we need to make our heart our hearts firm you know steadfast steadfast means we need to make our hearts firm we need not become weak when we face any kind of problems or unpleasant situations in life and then once again we are if we are strong enough what will happen all the challenges will become our friends they will be like our friends and we will not feel that they are troublesome all right so once we become friends to these problem the wind is referred here the wind is referred as a unpleasant situation of our life okay it's considered to be the adversity that comes in our life so once we become strong what will happen we will not feel that they are troublesome so moving ahead the wind blows out weak fires he makes strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day so now the poet has as i mentioned earlier he has kept the wind on a pedestal by comparing the wind to god he says that wind is god and we praise wind every day okay just like we pray to god regularly every day we pray to god okay so similarly wind okay wind is referred as god compared to god he says that wind is god and we praise wind every day he adds that everything that is weak gets finished off in the face of a strong wind whereas all the things that are strong will flourish will grow will become successful and they will become stronger and stronger he is giving us a very important message here the poet what he wants to give what he wants us to understand is that we should not feel bad or we should not feel weak whenever we are facing the challenges in life challenges or any adversities in life 
we should make ourselves physically and mentally strong so that we face these challenges and once we have done that you know what will happen once we have made ourselves strong enough we will overcome the challenges of life we will become friends with the challenges itself and then we will be happy okay why we will be happy because we had this challenges we will be happy that we had this challenges in our life because they will help us become more stronger and better right so adversities are necessary so that we emerge as a stronger personality that's a very strong message that the poet gives us in this poem now students i hope you are able to understand you understood this poem really well and the important message that the poet gives to us gives to us what is the message or the moral of this poem the poem carries the poem it carries the message that one must develop mental toughness and physical strength in order to survive the hardships of life if a person is feeble if a person is weak he will break down just as the weak buildings crumble down in the harsh wind storms similarly a person will break down therefore destructive forces should be turned into good friends with strength and determination this is the message the moral given to us by the poet now students there are many literary devices that we come across let me tell you few of them personification i know we have been reading we have been learning this uh, literary device since ages so personification is a literary device in which the poet associates human attributes with some abstract idea or an inanimate object or a natural phenomena now in the poem there's an example given over here you tore the pages of the books here the pronoun you refers to the wind an element of nature the wind is addressed as if it were a person okay do you really think wind can tear the pages okay it doesn't have hands like humans okay so a non living thing is given a what is it given it's given it it, it is referred it is addressed as if it were a person he makes strong fires roar and flourish this is another example the possessive pronoun he has been used to refer to the wind god who is presented as a man as a human being with tremendous power and force that can be both destructive and productive so here he which is a pronoun usually refer to a man has been given to wind metaphor now metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that it is not literally uh, true but helps explain an idea or makes a comparison in an indirect way so let me show you an example here you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings the wind has been presented as very clever and powerful being who terrifies and laughs at the weak and helpless there is one more metaphor over here you tore the pages of the books the action of the wind has been described as a mischievous act of a naughty child who makes a mess of everything in his or her playful but destructive way okay so there is an indirect comparison another figure of speech that we come across is anaphora it is a poetic device in which a word or group of words is used repeatedly you know to lay stress on a particular thing to create a special effect or to emphasize something this poetic device is used now we have come across this example don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf you see the uh, imperative structure beginning with don't is repeated at the beginning of three consecutive lines so this clearly shows the speaker is trying to give a strong appeal you know he's showing the this this line show the speaker strong appeal to the wind not to do certain things there is one more example here frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts okay these lines from the poem 
Okay, here the word crumbling is repeated a number of times to show the extent of damage, you know, the amount of damage that can be caused by a stormy wind. Now, we are done with the literary devices. We have come across personification, metaphor, as well as anaphora. So, all these literary devices are part of our poem. I have also uh, shown you the lines, okay, which uh, reflect the literary devices. The rhyme scheme. This poem, since it's a translation from the original Tamil version, it does not follow a rhyme scheme. So, we do not have a rhyme scheme in this poem. The next is value points. Yes, let me tell you value points in this poem. Now, since you've understood the poem well, we will go through this value points quickly. See, in this poem, we understand that we need, we need to become strong in mind and body. The wind indicates the difficulties and challenges that we face in our life. The hardships that we come across. We should face our problems boldly and stay firm in difficult situations. See children, problems will definitely come in life. What we have to do is be prepared. Our preparation should be strong so that we can face any kind of challenges in life. We should face our problems boldly and stay firm. We should keep our, we should prepare ourselves in such a way that our heart is firm. Unless we fight with our hardships, we cannot expect success in life. Okay, so this is the main message or you know the value points that we learn out of this poem. Also, it actually uh, helps us in uh, using it, we can say, in, uh, uh, imbibing it in our day-to-day -day life. So, this way we come to an end of this session. I hope students, you understood the poem well. We, co we, have, covered with, uh, we have covered the literary devices, the uh, value points as well as the morals.